good afternoon. It is the 24th of May, 2022, Thursday, and we're looking at, on the table, we got Moves Magazine, and it is um, August, September, 1992, and it's number 71, special edition number two. Um, let's take it out of this bag, and we're going to look at it for a couple of reasons. One, Moves Magazine was maybe may have been my favorite magazine to deal with um, war gaming. People are going to say, well, it's it's not the best war gaming magazine. Well, not now. <laughs> what I mean by that is, yeah, there's better there's magazines with better games. Still are. There were magazines with um, better articles, quite frankly. But Moves Magazine did something that... Um, it's totally been taken over by the internet now. We no really longer need a Moves magazine. It is, uh, it came out in late 70s, 70s, mid 70s there at SPI. And it, what it did was it was a way to support SPI games. Not only SPI games. You did, they, there was other games in there. It wasn't just SPI games, but it was a way to support SPI games and get, um, Errata in there, errata in there, uh, and to you know show people how to play it, showcase it, and so on the game a little bit, and explain it somewhat. That's what it was good for, and it ran until the end of what was uh, the end of um, when TSR acquired it in eighty one, late eighty one, yeah, and uh, early eighty two maybe, and then. Um, it was revived in 1991, and then obviously when Decision Games acquired a lot of the SPI stuff, they acquired this as well, along with Strategy and Tactics, and uh, it's kind of cool, Four Battles of the Ancient World, Decision Games. Uh, you still order from Decision Games, uh, direct, by the way. So best way I do like to order from them but this is that magazine and it's got a few things in here we got one thing we want to look at complete mini game and close maneuver it's in there and then um, we're gonna look at some of these things I've been looking at a lot of these old moves magazines just because doing research and um, man it's opened up a lot of things that I had forgot about or maybe I'd never known, but I knew about Moose Magazine. And um, we'll look at it a little bit here. That's I did read this, uh, most of it at least. Basic War Game and Library, the simple and the sophisticated. Uh, it was okay. They give you ancient, what they think is should be your uh, basic, and it you know gives you some ancient games. It gives you some uh, medieval games. Emperor China. I was reading that. That seems like it could be a decent game. I, I haven't played it. I can't comment on it. All right. And the Empires of the Middle Ages, uh, which is a good game. Uh, it's a different game. It's a good game, in my opinion. And then you got the Renaissance, the Thirty Years' War. A couple of things in there. Conquistador. Strategy and Tactics. Pre-Napoleonic and Napoleonic, obviously. Uh, Peter the Great, that was a 3W game. Hmm. I haven't, I haven't played that one either. I haven't played several of these, by the way. But uh, but, but that's a Moscova. Yeah, it's a, it's a Napoleonic. Uh, I, there's a lot of great Napoleonic games. So, But... Gives you different eras, right? But they have a American Civil War. Uh, not so much. I'm probably going to go into. They're going to put that with post-Napoleonic. Was there a post-Napoleonic period? Napoleonic. No, 19th century. <coughs> Excuse me. 19th century house divided which oh man 
Have I done a video on house dividing? That's such a simple game, but such a simple strategic level war game, but it works well. I love that game with the marches and the. Yeah, I love that game. It's a terrible swift sword. It's another TSS. That's a completely different game where they went uh, here. How simple that is. It is a simple game in, in a house divided. TSS is 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 a beast, man. That's that's a pretty much monster. It's a Richard Berg monster. The House Divider was originally published in 1981, but it's been it's been in pub it's been in print for so long and so how how however many years you know you can uh, you can find it. It's it's a good game. 1914, you got World War One. All right, so that's really what that article. That's I, I just wanted to look at it because that's a a cool article actually about that Holy War Afghanistan. That's another uh, good uh, Joseph Miranda. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. Let's look. Let's let's get to the game, shall we? And the game it did come with. Was that 20 counters about 20? Yeah. Um, simple. Simple game. Get the counters upside down. Of course I do. Just um, a blue four and up four. Okay. Regular NATO symbols looks like. Yeah. All right. Not many counters to deal with. It did come with those counters, which is kind of cool. And um, the game, GDW's Harpoon. No, that is. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Where does the hit start at? I put it in the middle. It's D Day. Starting here. Gosh. Without the great colors and stuff, it's hard to see where it's at. Victory conditions. This is the maneuver. So, we look like from the game maneuver, you got victory conditions. So, that might be a neat little article to read Basic Tactics for Beginners. When it comes to war games, there. yeah. All right, this is maneuver. You got a CRT here. Zones of control, CZOCs, objective. Is there a There's a few mini games that came in these moves magazines. I was looking at a sequence of play somewhere. First the first corner. Okay, so this is looks like the game proper, yeah. And it uh, looks like the map. <laughs> the map's quartered up. It's um yeah, it's a map. It's a very simple map. It's nothing to look at. Um, the half inch counters will fit in the hexes, looks like. But that's the map. There's a CRT. You got an advanced game. Can't imagine the introduction here, and the victory, victory conditions here. I can't imagine what the advanced game is when it's like maybe. A, Paragraph and a half length of advanced game. This is kind of cool. Introduction. Maneuver is a basic game for two players intended to help those who are new to simulations to understand the fundamental rules and procedures commonly found in war games. It is an abstract treatment of conflict. This is not designed to cover any particular war or battle in a realistic fashion. Okay, good to know. You're just 
again, for the for the beginner, for the abject beginner, looks like components. It will tell you the uh, hex grid map contains two lines representing the border between two imaginary countries. Okay, that's the lines. Prepare for play. Sequence of play. Turn sequence of four phases. First player movement phase. Second player turn. Well, movement phase and combat phase. Then it's going east to west there instead of north and south. So, um, movement phase and combat phase. And the second player movement phase and combat phase. Very simple sequence of play. That's all you got. You got combat. Looks like you're dealing with a little ZOCs. It looks like you got a little bit of movement. You do have start dealing with supply. Replacements, the capital, victory conditions. What are victory conditions? Let's see. A player wins the game if both of the following conditions apply at the end of any enemy player turn. The enemy capital is captured and, <coughs> excuse me, the captured player has at least two more combat units on the map than the enemy player. If both conditions are not met, play continues. If neither player achieves victory, by the end of turn 10, the battle ends in a draw. Okay, so we got 10. All right. With how much counters there? With 10 counters. You, you're timed out after, the, after 10 turns. Movement. Um, all right. So what it looks like to me, is a game that's about a step up from that. Oh man, what was that? Done it again game, the free one that um, was free when it was. It's it's a beginning game. What's it called? Ah, uh, um, it was put out by Victory Point Game as well. I've got that game, both of them, the free one and the Victory Point game. It was very very simple. This is just a step up from that. But it does seem to, that game would teach you how, but very basic, um, you know, I think you had five counters in that game. Man, it was just, you know, it teaches very basic things in this game as well. There's a little bit more to it than that one, but this one will uh, teach you some very basic things. And uh, nothing exciting to it, but it looks like it will teach you the concepts of old school chit and, um, hex and chit war gaming right which there seems to be especially if you were going to play something like the old SBI games or the decision games or um, yeah those are concepts all those are concepts which are can be and are um, universal in a lot of these games um, I don't think I'm going to play it but it's just I don't know not that I think it's a bad game, it's just a learning game and, you know, I don't really think I need the learning experience. I just think it was an interesting thing to find in a moves magazine from back in the day, all right? But like I said, this was, quite frankly, my favorite magazine. Um, they didn't come with full-on games most of the time. There were some mini games in there. Another one that was put out by Decision Games and by Joseph Miranda. This, I think, is... Uh, Two, this maneuver game has been designed by Joe Moranda. But another one, L.A. Lawless, which was kind of an interesting game about, um, you know, um, the L.A. Riots is sort of a, uh, yeah, what, something to make a game out of, but it's sort of a uh, vanguard of a change, right? That's what that looked at. A uh, very simple game, too, and I like any kind of street combat war games, right? Get everyone I can find. All right, that's it. Article index, and we are good. We got some advertisement, but that's it. Maneuver in Moves Magazine uh, number 71, and it costed six ninety five in the U.S. and eight fifty in Canada. And there it was. All right. If you want to pick up any, uh, if you want to pick up a game that may teach you some concepts, basic concepts of gaming, and maybe a little more more um, to it, then 
maneuver. It won't teach you hex and shit, but it will teach you basic concepts of thought and getting through. Then pick up my game, Friday Night at Fallujah, a D66 war game by me, Mr. Brent Campbell. And um, yeah, it's a good game. I'm going to, I have to, I might do that tonight, maybe tomorrow. Um, go through some more how to play videos of it. But yeah, there it is. Well, y'all have a great day. Um, what was your favorite war game in magazine? Or what is your favorite? Right now, was my, I think I still have to go with like S&T right now if I was going to have to pick a war game in magazine. But there are some, there are, there are some good ones. Was that Yaw? Is that still around? It's a good one. Um, oh, uh, what is... Um, uh, what's the big one now? Puts out, um, man, I just went totally, it's, I'm tired of something. It's been, it's been a long day. Uh, the one Marco Herman puts out games in all the time. What's that? That's a good one too. It don't matter. All right, y'all. Y'all have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.